reasons. But yeah. that was the primary reason people okay. were coming to Tanzania. Mm -hmm. When that man died, I'm not even joking with you. Every local that is honest will tell you the exact same thing I'm about to tell you. The people change. The big difference between Tanzania when I first came and Tanzania as it is now mm -hmm. is the mentality of the people shifted. And we don't realize that in a lot of African countries, especially over in the East, mm -hmm. they will follow whatever their leader is like. Hi guys, welcome to Kenganda. My name is Janita Maya and this is the Repat Podcast. Now we do have a special guest. We had to bring him back just for you guys. I'll let him introduce himself. Hey guys, uh, I'm Mark. Uh, Mark meets Africa and I'm glad to be back. <laughs> You're welcome. O'Shea Duke Jackson sipping on the wine. Shout out to the Daily Wrap Up crew. My favorite podcast out of New York City. I got their merch on. Check them out on their YouTube channel. Let's get into it. Yeah, O'Shea, you're leading this one. <clears throat> okay, so, you know, we've been talking a lot about uh, some of the issues going on in the uh, repack community in Tanzania. Uh, we've gotten some people that actually responded to our videos and things like that. So shout out to that particular brother. I can't uh, think of his name right now. But um, one of the things that you also mentioned is that African-Americans, we tell our business a lot to the locals, which then leaves us in a situation where we may be taken advantage of. Um, can you give an example of how we do that when we're there? Um, yeah, I, I remember last time we were talking about uh, particularly in taxis. So when okay. we tell them, you know, all of our business, sometimes we think they're listening to us and we think they're agreeing with us. But uh -huh. a lot of people don't realize the way it works in East Africa specifically is people who are working for you Yes. Or people who you're paying, <clears throat> mm -hmm. they'll just agree with whatever you say. Okay. Yeah. In fact, you mentioned that, I believe. You said because he's being paid. Yeah. And so it's a common thing. Even if I have uh, some people maybe doing some work around the, the building. Yeah. Anything you say, they'll agree with. It's just, I guess, it's normal for them to agree with their boss. Okay. It doesn't mean they actually agree. <clears throat> so we take that as they're actually agreeing with us. Okay. But... um. Yeah, we do it in taxis, we do it in restaurants, we do it in offices, we do it everywhere. Okay. If you can get to a point where you walk into like an immigration office sure. and they're saying, you know, you, maybe you have an issue on your immigrate your visa. Okay. And you try to make the argument <clears> of <throat> this system doesn't work, they're always going to hit you with, well, you left your country because of police brutality or something like whoa, that. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. I could whoa. show you, if you want to see something, mm. I could show you a video on my phone where there was a brother, the one that tried to sue me for firing him because he didn't do work. Yes. He called me a slave. <clears throat> no. Now, what would make a Tanzanian know to know, even know that? Wait a minute. Wait a because minute. Because enough of us went there and yes. started blabbing our history to people who don't care. Okay, Some hold people on. do. Most people don't. Yeah, let me let me get back. That's that's okay. Well, we, we, we're going in a rabbit hole tonight. Let's, let, let me let me kind of get back to that initial point mm. <clears throat> that. I've seen videos of, I think we have one video on our channel here where there was a, a lady that talked about her her issues at the Tanzanian Immigration Office. Yeah, mm -hmm. Lala's Jenny. Shout out to her. Yeah. That video did very good on our, our channel. But you're saying that because of, you know, us being so happy to be there, yeah. then us telling them, you. you know, we're glad to leave the, what do they call that? uh Matrix? Babylon, people yeah. call Babylon. Yeah, we use that a lot, that ba term. Yeah, Babylon. And then you start having problems then, they'll just tell you, well, you 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 left, where you left has police brutality. Yeah. Wow. It, well, I guess it's, it's, <clears throat> it's really an issue of, let's say you get into an argument with a person who you know a lot about. Okay. You have a lot of ammunition. Uh-huh. And so that's all it is. It's not to say every Tanzanian is, you know, insensitive to our issues because that's not true okay i don't want everybody to think oh don't go to tanzania because those people hate us no no, no, no. in in fact let me before i make any point there was a huge difference between tanzania in 2020 and tanzania in 2020 whenever magafuli died huge <clears throat> difference down to the point where the locals were telling you 
when Maga Fooley, I believe, was in office. Okay. And I asked this from an elderly woman who has an organization in Morogoro. She deals with street, or no, she deals with uh, special needs children. She's okay. been on my channel. It, it, she's a Tanzanian. She's a Tanzanian. Okay. She and a bunch of other elderly Tanzanians. Okay. When he first died or was taken out or however it happened, yeah. right? She and a few other elders, because I asked around, they said, this country <clears throat> is going back to how it used to be. I said, how did it used to be? She said, the culture of the country, Tanzania, was a bit different than what it was when he was in office. When mm -hmm. he was in office, it was such a friendly place to be. In fact, most <clears throat> of the people you would talk to, uh, ancestral African diaspora who were yeah. coming to Tanzania, yeah. their biggest reason, most of them were saying, I'm, I'm there because Magafuli. Magafuli, Magafuli, Magafuli. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You heard his name mm -hmm. going around. Oh, a lot. Yeah. He wasn't with the whole COVID thing and he didn't like the requirements. And yeah. He was one of the only countries. No, it was the only country in the world that didn't follow suit. Right. That's why people went to Tanzania. Right. In addition to maybe a few small other reasons. But yeah. that was the primary reason people okay. were coming to Tanzania. Mm -hmm. When that man died, I'm not even joking with you. Every local that is honest will tell you the exact same thing I'm about to tell you. The people change. The big difference between Tanzania when I first came and Tanzania as it is now mm -hmm. is the mentality of the people shifted. And we don't realize that in a lot of African countries, especially over in the East, mm -hmm. they will follow whatever their leader is like. Yeah. If the leader is straightforward, anti-corruption, that's Magafuli. Yes. They will not do that. They were afraid. And you, have, you hear some of the locals say. The ones with shops, they have to have a picture of him on the wall or something like that. Mm -hmm. They were, because a lot of them are superstitious, they were afraid to do corruption in front of his picture. Wow. In Tanzania. This is what a child told me. A little Tanzanian child. Same thing the elders were saying. So all of them were saying the same thing. He said, if you dropped a wallet on a bus when Magafuli was in office, you would give it back to the people, to the person who dropped it. If you dropped it on the bus now, you'd keep it. So the culture of the people definitely changed. Mm -hmm. That is a huge reason things changed in Tanzania for the people coming. Mm -hmm. Some of it was not just, well, you know, we realized the people were negative. No, there was a visible change in the people's mentality. Okay. Now it's normal to steal. It's normal to be corrupt. Uh -huh. That came back. Okay. You ask the elders, the elders, ask the elders, forget the people, ask the elders. The in people Tanzania, who have experience. Mm -hmm. What was Tanzania like before Magafuli? They'll tell you it was a terrible place. They'll tell you some of the things that they beat back, the, the darkness that was beat back, mm -hmm. the lying, the cheating, the stealing mm -hmm. was greater in the past. Mm -hmm. When he came into office, according to them, that changed. Mm -hmm. People were loving. People were happy. People were, you were family. When I walked into that airport, that man said, welcome home. You don't get that anymore. And I, I did, it didn't hit me until recently. Mm. I said, you know what? I do remember. I started going through what are the factors that changed in Tanzania? Mm -hmm. Leadership. Mm -hmm. Leaders can definitely affect a country. Mm -hmm. It can affect the people. In America, what happens if we have a leader that behaves a certain way? Yeah. People start to slip. Yep. So the leader definitely is a factor to consider when going to a country. Mm -hmm. Tanzania was a great country. It was the most friendly, <clears throat> happy place I'd ever been to. It was the first place I'd been to, but I definitely know it wasn't like this back then. Right, right, right. So to the credit of the people who came to Tanzania and experienced <clears throat> Tanzania for okay. the good and then experienced something different, mm -hmm. they're not crazy. They legitimately experienced a different Tanzania okay. when the leadership changed. Okay, so let me kind of get let me get back let me kind of get back to that then before we go go to Jonita. So basically what you're saying is when African Americans were coming to Tanzania, like in 2020, when I saw you coming, they were having a better experience. So, maybe being a little bit more open because a lot was happening. I believe it was the what's this guy in Minneapolis? He got killed. Uh, uh George Floyd. George Floyd. Yeah, I believe that happened around that time, 2020. Yeah. Okay. I, I think so. Yeah. It was. Uh... Yeah. Yo, it's it's 2020. Like a, it was like a whole different place. And yeah. I'm not even I believe Trump was still the president when George Floyd happened. I'm pretty sure he was in his last term. Okay. Probably. So they're, they're being open and straightforward as to why they want to come there. Mm -hmm. Then do you think that Maga Fooley was, did, did he understand that the, he had all these people coming into the country that were, as you consider, ancestral African diaspora, which means African-Americans, Jamaicans, Caribbeans. 
did he know? I'd like to believe he did. He did. According to a lot of the people who were coming and a lot of the locals, he had a plan to welcome us later on. Oh, when he died. And this is a very well known fact. Yes. That uh, next his predecessor. Who was a female, right? Who was a female. um, She's still there? Yeah. Yeah. She's there. She made it her mission to undo his legacy in certain ways. Okay. I don't know if that was a part of it, but I do know our perception changed. Okay. When I walked into immigration, the feeling was different. Okay, so let me let me, let me stop there. Now that it is this, mm-hmm. okay, and what, what, how should we behave? Like, cause one thing I would say is this: when I'm in Uganda, I never tell people mm-hmm. anything negative for the most part about what our experience is in America. Because number one, it's not their business. And, you know, I don't want them to see me as that to be like somebody they can victim. It's already bad. I already have this accent, right? How should we move on the continent knowing that we're glad to be here, but at the same time, there are certain things that we need to keep to ourselves as a group of people. Yeah, that's actually a really good point you make. Obviously, I said it in one episode, but I'm not the authority on black expertise. Mm. But if I had to say it, what what's worked for me at least, is just know who to say it to. Random people that you don't know, taxi drivers, restaurant drivers, uh-huh. all, I mean restaurant uh, workers, people like that. I'm not going to say they don't need to know, and I won't even say it's none of their business. I'll say that it's not necessary to tell them. Because they're not going to, they may not see it like you mean it. They're not going to see it. How can they? Yeah. It's like when we come here, it's very difficult to hear someone say something negative about the country you're in. Mm -hmm. You might hear people complaining, oh, the roads and yes, there's corruption. Those are obvious problems. Mm -hmm. In America, police brutality, those to the rest of the world, that's not an obvious problem. It Mm -hmm. is now because enough people talked about it. Yeah. But in Africa... Most of Africa, at least the way I'm seeing it, is that there are non-obvious problems. I've told you some things. I just told you about the village women. But that's Mm -hmm. not something most of us know. Mm -hmm. Because it's not something most of us are exposed to. It's not something most of them will talk about. Mm -hmm. There are certain things they do not tell us. They Mm -hmm. will not tell us. They might. Oh, absolutely true. There's a lot they won't. Very great point. Some of it is because they're not thinking about it. And some of it is because they're keeping it from us. Yes. Right. There's both sides. So when we come here, I believe it's our job to be as successful as possible. Right. Be as grateful as possible. Right. Be as understanding as possible to their issues. Yes. See, we have to be strong enough to say all this terrible stuff happened to me. I'm going to keep it inside and keep pushing on. Mm -hmm. At least be happy at the fact that you are no longer in the environment that hurt you. That should be enough for us. Right, right. We don't need to vent out our toxicity on them because what they hear in a society like most of Africa, Mm. where you have dictatorships in disguise and weird forms of democracy and, you know, governmental systems that are not what we come from. Right. They're taught that you don't speak against leaders. Right. They're taught you don't complain about problems out loud. You keep it shut. Even in families, you don't hear them saying... Ooh, my little sister did this. And she was walking around. Indian cultures like that too. Chinese cultures like that. Asian culture in general is like that. Even in Europe, old Europe. They're like that. They keep it in the house because it's nobody's business. You don't tell everybody what's going on behind closed doors. And there's some good and there's some bad with that. But the good is that you protect yourself from if that person is actually trying to get information to use against you. Now we have a situation where in certain places we go to, I even saw it in Zambia, mm-hmm. where they will, you know, even in Canada, funny enough, but you guys have police brutality. I went to Canada. I went to Edmonton. Mm-hmm. I was in a Wendy's mm-hmm. with my friend from the Congo, mm-hmm. or originally Congolese. Yeah. She's living there. Shout out to Grace. Okay. Um, and the guy in front of us is like, you guys have police brutality in America and you guys are killing each other. That, that, that's obvious because they're Canada. They're right above us. But if I come all the way to Africa 
and they say you guys kill each other all the time and you guys are terrible people to one another and and they're saying specific instances of George Floyd they know mm. Breonna Taylor when they know yeah. me, it's become an issue and we want everybody to sympathize with us we want them okay. to take our side because they look like us but they don't think like us yes because in their mind they are the equivalent of the white people in America mm-hmm. in Africa right America is <clears throat> predominantly white they are predominantly the race they are. Ugandan, Tanzanian, Kenya. They're the majority. Mm. So they're at the same level in, in regards to societal structure as white people. Right. Nobody's oppressing them. I mean, yeah, the government as a whole may be corrupt and maybe doesn't do much for them, but they're not thinking about it like that. Mm-hmm. We get so hurt at what happened to us that we come over here and we have to tell somebody. And there's nothing wrong. So when, to, 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 to answer your question, I don't think there's anything wrong with telling people. Yeah. But I think we need to know who we're telling because not everybody is your friend. Because, again, as soon as you have an argument, that's what they bring up. Well, aren't you a dirty American, dirty hey, African? Hey, hey. I'm serious. Yeah, I've, I've heard, heard, I've, I've heard I've, that before. Let me let, let me let jump. They, yeah, go ahead. Why would they say you're a dirty um, African American? They say that? If you got into an argument with, I won't say O'Shea. Let's use a random person Citati, on the street, right? Citati. Let's say Sitati. You got into an argument with him, mm. a really nasty argument, uh, yeah. right? He starts throwing all sorts of insults at you. Yeah. You're going to need to say something to him to make him feel just as bad. What do yeah. you use? The most deep and personal issue that you know he has. Mm-hmm. So you're going to say, didn't your wife leave you? <laughs> I'm not, does, he, his wife didn't leave him. But for the sake of the well, business, well. You know, <laughs> but because that's how we argue. As people, when mm, you get into an argument, you want to hurt that person person's. as much as possible. Yeah. So when we get into issues and situations when we get to a store and we get overcharged and we start saying oh don't you guys know that and this is what we do a lot we say don't you guys know that if you overcharge me today i'm not coming back tomorrow and you're going to lose business in the yeah. long term we are famous for saying that despite the fact that we didn't do that in america but we get mm. over here and all of a sudden it clicks mm. regardless it clicked mm. so we say that to them and we start making them feel bad oh well you know you guys' roads look like this i know how our people are I may not know all of our characteristics, but I'm not stupid to the fact that we do this. Let's be honest with ourselves. They do it to us sometimes, but we do it to them. I can't focus. Oh, yeah, no. I got to focus on us. Definitely. trying to improve us. I've done that. So, I mean. When we get to these stores and we do that, and they're thinking, how can I say something to this American? Mm. Oh, wait, no. He said he's not an American. African American. Didn't your police try to kill you? Aren't you... Uh, you yeah. know, George Floyd's type of people. Aren't you the ones being hunted and exterminated? Yeah. Aren't you the ones who had to flee your country? You have African Americans coming to Africa, yeah. going to these immigration offices, trying to apply for refugee status. Now, how silly is that? What no. are we? What? <laughs> what? Here's the thing. Here's the An thing. American? American. <sighs> because they're so, in, in number one, they don't know what that is. Right. Because that's, it, it, it hit me that our people don't fully understand certain legal terms. Okay. And there was a bill that rolled out in Tanzania a few months back. And the bill was for the diaspora. I saw it going through. Yes. People were sending it to me. Yes. I, I sent it video. to Joan. I made, it, I made a video about this. Mm-hmm. I had you remember it. that link I sent you about the Tanzanian diaspora? Yeah, you did. You said that yeah. Too. They weren't diaspora. We are not legally classified Tanzania as diaspora. diaspora right. A diaspora yeah. in most of Africa. The legal definition of a diaspora is an African who left and came back. Yes. That's a diaspora. Yes. We took that term and adapted it for us. So when we saw a bill come out that said Tanzania is welcoming the diaspora, they were celebrating. And I made a video on my <sighs> channel and I said, we're not diaspora or something like, I don't remember yes. what I called it. But the point is our people bought that instead of reading the article. Exactly. We just celebrated. Yes. And so when I see that and then I see people going to be a refugee, a refugee is not something you want to be. No. You will never be able to travel with peace. You yes. will never be able, because you're basically a step down from a spy. So no country is going to take you well, because they don't know you at that point. Right. If you do get that refugee status, we don't know where you come from, what you do. You could say anything. You're not going to have a favorable status in, right. in any country's eyes. Did anybody, did anybody ever get it? No, I don't think they were really <laughs> trying to. They were telling people we're basically refugees. Oh, my God. But, you know, trying to convince them we need a policy for African-Americans coming as refugee status. Refugee status is not a positive thing. It is a political emergency. It is. It is something that you don't get on a plane and plan a three-month trip. 
as a refugee. Right. Mm-hmm. And then pack a clothes and bag. No, you're running with what's on your back yeah. or what you could throw in a bag and sling over your back. That's a refugee. And when the refugee comes to another country, they could live in the woods. See, we say we're refugees and we need a three bedroom apartment and it has to be like this. And right. how come Funnish. these roads don't look nice? And how yeah. come y'all ain't got no <laughs> Did you say for- <laughs> furnace? Yeah. How come these, how come y'all yeah. ain't got no dang, you know, this food or right. how come these Pringles cost three times more than in America? Uh-huh. That's not a refugee. You want some Pringles? I, let me have some. Or, no, I don't like them. But you know what I'm saying? I can buy you some if you want some. I don't like them. You don't want to talk they about just Pringles? weird. Yeah. yeah I don't I like them. Oh, you're a hater. Like um, let me go. Let me, let me just say this real quick. You know, one thing I would say about, um, about Joan and um, and quickly, uh, I, I remember the phrase, I you know, because John Nita and um, later Rachel, you've met Rachel before. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a very stubborn person with a bad temper. Like, that's just me. When I, once I get going, it's yeah, it's kind of I'm, I'm going right, so I'm easily irritated. And but then there was a phrase that I've heard. And it's, this is Uganda. This is Africa. Okay? Mm-hmm. So at that point, I realized, and I think many of us, uh, for, you know, from the African-American community realize, like, once we understand that what that phrase is, mm-hmm. it means that nobody cares and they don't owe you anything. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. We don't but, know you. But, the, but the, here's the flip side of that, that I realized I had some power. I also don't owe you anything. And then that means if that is your attitude towards me, then my attitude towards you is going to be in great design to yours towards myself. Like I'm going to give you that same kind of disparity or parity, however you want to take it, right? If you're not giving me, if you're giving me inequality, then that means I can also do that to you. So I think what happens with us as a, as a community, and you've touched on this in our previous podcast, which is we're looking from parity because we're very similar to people in East Africa or West Africa. Like we, when we come up, even when I'm in Poland, I come across somebody from Uganda, Tanzania, any South Africa. I know like that's my guy right there. Or mm-hmm. you, like, I feel a connection to It's a spiritual connection. I know these are my, you know, yeah. or my cousins or something like that. I know that. Right. But also at the same time, I know that me being here is based on, what we as black foreigners can produce and we have to fight our way here and we're not going to get it on sympathy and we're not going to get it on empathy. And once I realized that, then it, it got me clearly to understand the objective of, okay, then let's do something here that probably has not been done. So then we can fight for our respect in the mar- like, you know, you're going to have to fight for your respect here. I don't know why people think like you're coming back to Africa. You have ancestral roots here. You're old here. Those arguments may be right. Can I make a point to sure. that? You'll get more respect and you can hate me all you want if there are people watching this. But this is the truth. Not the truth by word, but the truth by observation. Mm-hmm. You get the only people coming to Africa that get automatic respect are white people. Mm-hmm. Yep. She agrees. That's she is sad, a Ugandan woman. Yeah. You as a black man. As an African-American, Afro-Caribbean, Afro-Jamaican, Afro-British, Afro-UK, London, wherever you come from, will have to, like O'Shea said, fight for your respect. Do something so spectacular and different and unique and successful that people want to know more about you. Then they'll say, you know what? Where are you from? Because walking down the street in Tanzania, I'm a Tanzanian in their eyes until I open my mouth. And sometimes when I open my mouth, what they say is, why are you pretending to be American? So if I can be put in a category where I'm actually looked down on because they perceive me as someone who's faking where I actually come from. Yeah. That's an actual thing we have to deal with. Right. I've been in police stations and the situation can get very ugly because they think you're pretending to be from somewhere uh, else. Oh. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. You can't pretend with such a strong accent. They can don't you? care. Yeah, they There's don't care. There's people who have left. At least they never had that here. There's people. I think you got it's better than Tanzania, by the way, the more I keep hearing about Tanzania. But I'm only telling you what's happened. Yes. Uh, I've never had those problems here. But let me let me, let me just, before I forget, I don't want to just say this because, you know, um, one of the things that I, I've noticed, and this is going to sound 
very biased was like, I've tried to even work with people here to come on the podcast. And that's why I brought you here earlier because of a fallout that I had with somebody else. And the thing is, is that I was talking to brother Kala Genesis. Shout out to him. You, you interviewed him before. Remember? Mm -hmm. Very long winded guy from our guy. Yeah. He, he, he told me something about this podcast. that was very interesting. He said, you know, O'Shea, the King Gonda YouTube channel, it shows one thing that African Americans have an interest in the development of Africa. And, you know, I think sometimes we could take things personal. We could take things, um, you know, from the trajectory that the fact that these people don't understand our plight and all of that. But again, in, in Jonita's famous words, this, this is Uganda. Is yeah. And let me just say this for our Ugandan diaspora, who I'm very fond of. Right. I, I, I have a very big love for Uganda diaspora because I, I know some one of my daughter. She lives in Poland. Not my real daughter, but, you know, shout out to Aaron Ochola. They have the same problems, if not worse than what I have. Because they're in the diaspora working. They're in Amsterdam. They're in London. They're in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And guess what? They, they know more about the situation, how to fix it. They have problems. And you know what they say? This is Uganda. They yeah. support this country more than even me. So at the end of the day, as, as us as blacks, we have to stop looking for sympathy. Mm -hmm. On the continent of Africa I don't care where you go Ghana, Gambia You come here I am O'Shea Duke Jackson Guys don't like my friend I'll be frank now I f swing the bat I'm here to do that I'm here to do I, I understand you don't care So let me do what I'm supposed to be doing And let me tell you guys something also Before we go back to you guys I want to say this If you're an African American living in Africa Do me one favor Be where you're supposed to be at You're supposed to be doing something You're supposed to be there doing it mm -hmm. Don't have your ass at the beach or chasing around with women or men or whatever you're doing. You know, you, you're a foreigner someplace. You're from America. People are going to expect that you come from a system that produces great things. And if you happen to be the African-American, nobody wants to know that you ran out of money. Nobody wants to know. Do what you're supposed to be doing. Be where you're supposed to be at. Nobody about how you feel here. Okay? You got to make yourself important. And you take it by force. Yeah, that's 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 my mentality. I'm here to take what I believe belongs to me. It's mm -hmm. mine. So, and at the same time, I can do that and add value. I can do that and promote the country. I can do that, and do, but that's my mentality. I'm not asking you for. Mm -hmm. I'll make you give me what I believe you need to give me for me being here. And I think if we do that, we'll start. We were victims in America, but when you come to Africa, everybody black, you can't be a victim no more. Yeah. Look at the Nigerian immigrants. They had oppression in Nigeria, but they come someplace else. Hey, nobody wants to hear excuses, even if it's a less developed place than where you come from. You got to be able to swing the bat at yeah. the end of the day. Everybody got their problems here. Yeah, People Some poor, they got kids, they got, you know, groceries going up, the roads are bad. Nobody cares about your issues. People barely live in day to day. And we got to understand that. So, you know, do what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Take a deep look at yourself. You're going to become a, a big boy or a big girl. Mm -hmm. Put your big girl, uh, put, 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 your, put your boxers on, whatever. Stand up and pee if you're a guy. Hey, you know, do what you're supposed to do. Are there people who sit and pee? <laughs> it's a reference for it's, toddlers. Oh, toddlers sit down and pee. Oh. Yeah, grow up. So that's what they're saying. And yes, there's some grown men that sit down and pee. Well, but he's referencing, I think. You're going to have to be, you're gonna be, you're gonna be, you're gonna be adult here. You're going to grow up. If you can't be an adult here, don't come. Yeah. Because here is for adults. Oof. So that's what I want to tell you guys. If only more people knew that, O'Shea. Yeah. 50-year-olds yeah. coming over here trying to get sympathy. And there's nothing wrong. We're not wrong for wanting that. But we need to be strong enough to keep going even when we've been hurt. There you yeah. go. You know, when they, they say we're on the front lines in America, we're on the front lines. Well, the soldier on the front lines doesn't just say, okay, you know what? I'm tired of the front lines. Can we pause the war? Mm -hmm. No, you keep going. Yeah. Africa's like the back lines. You have the opportunity to heal here. You don't hear as many crazy things going on over here yeah. in the same way we're used to. Oh, my God. You, there's crazy stuff going on here, but it's passively crazy. Yeah. It's not in your face crazy. You're not mm -hmm. going to be sitting in a Walmart shopping for sweet corn and, you know. A fight breakout. Yeah. yeah. Fight you know breakout I mean? and somebody starts 
that doesn't happen. No, you might. You know. I have never seen that happen. No, no. Yeah. But when I go, when I go, to, when I go to Sacramento, I go to Sacramento. Shout out to Walmart on Truxel Road. At any given time, you never know. At any, it got so bad. Uh, shout out to SPK. He sent me a picture of. I mean, he's living in um, in I won't say what city, but he's living in the West Coast somewhere. He sent me. There's some steak. It got so bad. You know, people are looting in California. Like, yeah. it's a big thing now. They changed the law. So Smashing the grabs, arrested, like right? almost every week. Mm. Okay? Especially in the Bay Area. He sent me of a piece of a steak. I'm going to put it here on the screen if I can put it there, right? It's encaged. Mm. Because people are stealing meat like that in the States. Now, you think that would be happening here. Man, that's happening in America. Can I add something? Yeah. We can't say... You know, I don't. I know you don't mean it like this, but sometimes they'll perceive it as all of America. That's in some places. Mm. There's some places that are yeah. great, and there's some places that aren't. Well, it's the same here. You can't go to places here where they lock up stuff like that. No, no. But what I'm saying is, mm. I have never, and I'm just saying this about. I've been in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. I've been most parts of this country, mm. in many parts, at least forty percent, fifty percent, something like that. I've never seen care for where they're locking up stuff. Yeah. But that's that's that's. That's because of the smash and grabs going on in the States. Well, the thieves here, so stealing is not. Kill you. Like, but there I've is happened a lot to see. Petty theft. I, you, for but stealing a hand. but a I've seen, I've okay. seen mob justice. Have you seen it before? Hmm? Have you seen mob justice taking place? Yeah, in Tanzania. I saw it three times in okay. three years. They killed it. The yeah, somebody the tried to steal a motorcycle. They were all stomping them out. Yeah. And then <laughs> and somebody, I don't know what he did. He snatched a phone and ran and the. I don't know how you could do that in a crowd of people, but they all beat them up, beat yeah. them bloody. Yeah. And then I, yeah, it happened I, a few times. As there. a kid, I watched, um, I watched them burn a thief alive. Anyway, um, I just wanted to tell you guys a story time. Mm -hmm. Story yeah. time music. They hate that too. <laughs> Hold on a second. Give them, give them some different story time music. That's sad music y'all be using, man. It's time to give them the story time music. Story time music. <laughs> okay, so, um, when during the lockdown, I think I won't say his name, but there's an African American who came who came to the country and um well he came before the lockdown but like every time we'd interact with him he would tell us these stories by then kim was alive and he would used to tell us these stories of what happened like the revolution history <laughs> yeah, yeah. and so much and so forth and that is information that we needed to hear but it's not something that we related to you understand even when he started telling us about his stories of what was happening in the states and whatnot i understand the the emotion that comes with it and we we as Africans do not try to be insensitive to what is happening, but we do not feel so much as an African-American would feel if they're telling us that story. Because sometimes when they're telling you that story, you can see that they really want you to, you know, to have some empathy and mm -hmm. feel what they're feeling. It's like, oh, I went <clears throat> through this. It's like, oh my God, how dare they? But then we're just listening. And then it's like, oh, this is not the reaction they expected from us. Can I you add know? to that? I remember I was there. We won't yeah. call the person's name, right? Yeah, let's not. But um, love the guy. But the thing is this. You have to understand that Ugandans, Tanzanians, and Kenyans, wherever you go, have their own issues. Nobody, just think about it. You know, Johnny is a, a woman, right? A man wants to marry her. She don't really care about, it's, 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 it's what you're going through. I mean, at, at a certain point she can, but it's what can you do? You need to be ready to be there for her. Almost any woman, right? Or any company. Just imagine on your resume. I was beat. I was stabbed. Okay. The company wants to know, can you fulfill this job? It's, you know, when you come here, that's great. Now, once you're a good employee and you're great to ask the company, maybe I might care about that. Yeah. The reality is I found that, you know, a lot of pro blacks when they come to Africa, especially from our community, you know, we're on the Walter Rodney tip, John Henry Clark tip, Dr. Amos Wilson tip. You know, we 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 read up on some of the things that our guys like A.G. Gaston has done. Um, doc, you know, Dr. Claude Anderson, you know, um, people like that, right? We have our teachers and we like to research Malcolm X. We have a more of a militant mindset. We want to wake African up, Africans up. Mm -hmm. Here's how you wake Africans up. Anybody you want to deal with bring them the incentives as to why your thinking works. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the problem with the African-Americans, we're really good at teaching and talking. We're very bad in Africa at producing. Yeah. 
what people want to see is why what you think of as far as talking about teamwork. We need to work together. We need to do it. No, 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 no. You bring here you sacrifice you show the people in your community that it's a benefit and to working with you then they'll adapt okay well damn this is what i can do that's the sacrifice you got to make most brothers want to be here teaching and you want to become a a, a a a new version of dr umar johnson whatever yeah. and that's and, and that's not what works what works here is results yeah mm -hmm. so well, i used to get a lot of pushback from certain people on, on the team and but but through our work and things that we have done, now people can see. Okay, well the, this way works, and this is why it works because they see it work. Mm -hmm. They seen us when we were in 2019 and where we are now. Yeah, but definitely. that's based off of the experience. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to do that. Yeah. So African Americans or anybody in the diaspora, I would even say if you're in the Ugandan diaspora, you know you're not gonna come here and wake people up based off charisma. You you know that okay. that won't keep you. Mm -hmm. You need to have results, tangible results. Yeah. You know, can you take care of the, the people in your community, the women in your community? Can you do things for the country? Now, once you can do that, okay, now you're important enough for me to listen to you. Mm. And then here's a part. Here's another part. You could be making results for five years and no, nobody listen to you. That's also the case. Look at us. It's possible. <laughs> it's very possible. But speaking of, uh, most times when, an African is listening to an African American, you know, victimize themselves and tell you all these sad stories. Yes. They're thinking, how are you coming from a first class country? There you go. Complaining of all that when people are in third world countries dying of hunger. Mm -hmm. It's like, how are you complaining about, you know, maybe someone looks at you in a funny way and then that go to railed up and you were so pissed about it. But their kids, like literally their kids in Africa dying of hunger, you know? Yeah. So most times when you tell such stories, just be mindful of what you're saying, like you say, like don't try to victimize yourself. But I just want to switch. Um, I just want to flip the uh, the switch. And so, if they're not venting, if African Americans are not venting, and then you're saying they they just have to keep it in and then like do their work. So how can they get over that trauma or that that they've experienced that's hurting them? They get around each other. Oh, now get what around we each other. need okay. is that Africa, and I'm not saying separate ourselves from the people. But until we can fully get into a mentality where we're not in that victimized mentality, mm -hmm. where we can sort of have a foothold, we need to stick together. Because, again, what O'Shea was saying was we need to show results. It's hard to show results as individuals. If we came together and said, look, we're a people that want to be here. Look, we have Africa's best interest in mind. Look, we're yeah. pretty much the same people. You should listen to what we're saying. Then we'd have more because, again, I said I said it in the last episode, but Africa doesn't respect individuals. They respect groups. They respect uh, organizations. And so if we can come together, we can vent all we want to each other. But it's like you said, nobody's going to care. Mm -hmm. and, in, and in a way, I think part of it, I'm not saying we should just forget about it because you can't forget about that mm -hmm. stuff. But I mean, like like I said earlier, just be strong enough to keep going until you do have the ability to vent because then people will be coming to you asking you well, what did you go through um, how did you you know how did you overcome how did you overcome what brought you to africa and built this you know whether it's oshay what, what made you build this multi-million dollar you know company. production company <laughs> they'll i'm saying for the future yeah yeah but they'll you said it they'll come to you yeah and then you can vent all you want mm -hmm. and then you could do it in a way where you don't look bad you say yeah mm -hmm. after all that look where i am Right now, it's not a victim; it's a victor. Yes, and so people will back up and say, "You know what? I'm inspired." Right. Otherwise, they're just looking at you, saying, "Like what she said, we have people dying, and you're coming. Exactly. Here. You got on a plane. You're wearing a shirt more expensive than my dang iPhone. You, know, you have access you have to your credit cards. You have access to your credit, ATMs, banks, mm. embassy. You have all this stuff that we could never think of. You got on a plane. I've never been on a plane." Mm. Shout out to I don't I'm think sorry. I'll ever be able to get on a plane. Someplace. I hate to give a shout out to the white man, but shout out to American Express. You know, I hate to get <laughs> it's handy. Never leave home without it. <laughs> <laughs> but we have access to, to resources they don't. Yeah. In fact, somebody was telling me yesterday, and I knew this from Tanzania, but I guess it's the same in Uganda. Mm -hmm. The way they buy cars, those nice ones you see, all those Prados, mm -hmm. they rent, I mean, they take out a loan mm -hmm. from their. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm right. trying to. I'm. I don't know if this is exactly it. Okay, please. Because I didn't get it. 
mm-hmm. but I think I'm understanding it. They'll take out a loan, right? Mm-hmm. It's based on how much they make. Mm-hmm. The salary. They'll take out a loan that's a percentage amount for the down payment of their car, mm-hmm. and then they'll just pay that loan. And sometimes it's with the money that they took out for the loan while they make money to pay off that loan. Is that how they do it in Tanzania? It's something like it, yeah. Those oh. nice prod, all those nice cars. I mean, because there's no real credit system here. Yeah, there's no credit. You don't have credit cards. That's it's not a thing. And the loans are based on, you know, similar to the like stage. Maybe like a salary, you have, a salary, yeah, salary loan. Yeah, so they... You get in and get a loan. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So it's like even when you see things like that are nice, people with nice things, the method they use to get it is is not like us. Yeah. Yeah. Or we can actually have nice things. You have millionaires that could just buy that car outright. Even well-off people here wouldn't have that money. No, but most people here use cash. Mm -hmm. Cash. Yeah. Even Like they buy a car just outright. They use cash, the houses, everything. Everything. Or they build it. Buy it outright. Yeah. Okay, then I heard. Yeah, they save up, they wait, they save up and wait, and then buy cash. Like even me with my personal, like, and I'm not afraid to say this. I have a personal American pension, Mm -hmm. and I just there you go. Like with every month, it just comes out. You know, and that's because like I'm an American. I have access to you know Vanguard, BlackRock. There's Fidelity. There's Charles Schwab. Yeah. I mean, you can just grow your wealth insanely as an American and write it off. You know what I mean? Like, There's options. Y- y- yeah, you can just, I mean, you get reward points. Like, imagine, like, the idea of reward points. And my mom, shout out to her. She's always taking my rewards points. But um, every year. But you can get, you know, we are, we're, I'm an American Express customer. Been sold for like almost 20 years. And what I think when I when I went to, no, no, no. I, I think we went to, to Kenya. Mm. I don't think I, but yeah, I went, I, I, I think I, would, I, I paid for Joni to, we went to. The whole team. Yeah, the whole team went to Kenya. Yeah. And just whoop, it was on our American Express. And we got points for that that I can use to buy something else. That don't exist here. It does mm-hmm. not. It doesn't exist here. Not yet. Not yet. But you, it's it's at least ten or fifteen years down behind twenty years, so you know we have. So, but what I'm saying is, and I'm not saying it to brag, but that's the culture we come from. You know, we have an Amazon account. You know, those you can are buy anything in the world. Yeah, like same day delivery. Like if, if you're in, I was last time in Sacramento. There was a TV I wanted to buy my mom, and it said, "If you order within the next four hours." That TV will be, will be there. The Amazon guy will come and deliver the shit and knock on the door and he will be gone and the TV will be there. That's how efficient. How, what, what can you get like that in here in Uganda? And I'm talking about like multiple things. If you live in like Amazon, New York City, Amazon, LA, I mean, you know, Sacramento is a smaller market, but still you can get most things within, within the same day. Can I add something to that? Sure. And I will say there's a positive and negative to that efficiency. One of the things some people are escaping by leaving America is that level of control that the system has over people's daily lives. It's the fact that you can be found anywhere. There's cameras on every street. There's ways to track you. There's some people don't actually like that feeling. Sure. So they come to Africa and it's like, oh, there's less of a system in place, but there's still some level of freedom because of that. Yeah. So I think that's one of the trade offs for having a system in America is that you can have and even China, I believe it's even more wild over there is that mm. you have a lot of a uh, I mean and, and you know some people make the argument if you're not doing anything illegal you shouldn't be worried but it's the fact that somebody knows everything about everything you. that you're doing all, you know, all your moves it's it, too mapped out yeah so over here there's a bit more freedom in regards to your less yeah easy to find okay I get yeah. that um, what are your last remarks about this particular um, topic I mean I would just say for those in the um, in the diaspora, or even if you're in the Ugandan diaspora, but particularly African Americans, he's right. Mm. We have problems. We have a history of our group. I never uh, talk down on my group when I'm here, even though we have problems. Yeah. Um. You you know I I'm, I'm very pro African American. Sure. That is who I am. Mm. So I am a Pan African, but I'm an African American. Let me just say this: I'm a, I'm who I am. I identify first. You can't be Pan-African 
and deny your own particular ex- existence because you can't contribute to Pan-Africanism if you can't identify with who you are first. You need to be a, a Choli first, Buganda first, yeah. African-American first. You must love your own group first. So primarily, I'm that first. Then I can participate in other things. So when I come here, uh, you know, unless you ask me, I'm not going to tell you because you don't need to know our business from what we do because you need to be somebody for me to tell you that. And if you want to know, I'll tell you. But I don't want you to victimize me because mm. I'm already going to be victimized because I'm, I'm from America. You know, so um, I don't really go too much into the slave trade. Um, if you ask me like to identify myself, I will make references to people like LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Beyonce, mm. to no- let you know who we are. Mm. But then I'll try to like not go further than that because they don't need to know that and they don't care. Yeah. So I'm trying to align myself with the values of people here that they care. Then once I know that you're valuable and you care, like for example, we're doing business here in the city. I'm always trying to pay on time, try to pay a little bit more. Um, I want to get people to, 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 to care about me based off of just knowing me. And then if you want to know what kind of people that we come from, then that's something that's different. Mm. But let's get into what makes the things happen. First, what benefits you from knowing me? I focus on that first. If you want to get into history of how I feel about racism and interracial dating, that could be something for another conversation after you've seen why my thought process is bringing you value. I focus on the value addition first. Then everything else comes later. So if if my group did a good job with me, which I know they did, to make an impact on where I'm at, or I'm at you will want to ask more. If not, you want to ask me to leave. So I focus on that, and I notice that I have pretty decent relationships when I focus on what's in it for them. Because what's in it for them, it's what's in it for me. Now, if the diaspora can focus on that, now we can create more Ugandan businesses, and we can create more African-American businesses, and then we can start to do a lot more trade, and then now our groups can start to really benefit off of helping each other. But then when it's a one-sided lecture, like who are we to be lecturing them anyway? Like they don't have their own history. They don't have their own. Like we have that habit of coming here wanting to lecture them all the time. What's the, what's the point in that? Like number one, they don't care and you're wasting their time. You know? Mm-hmm. So I would say that. Stop being victims in Africa. Then you'll find you will actually start to do some great shit. It's, it's, it was wide open. I'm glad to be here changing my life. Not taking it back. I have my complaints here and there. Okay. Mark, what's your last remarks? Do you have any? I'll just add on to what he was saying. Yes. Focus on building a relationship here mm-hmm. before you start airing out your laundry. Okay. Uh, you got to get to know them first. Get them to get interested in you. And, you know, some of us will, and I'm sorry to throw a whole nother point in there, but I'll try to make it quick. But some of us will say something like, oh, you know, Africans sold us. Oh, yeah. And they, so they that's actually some, some of the reason, that. that's some of the reason why some of us won't you know, get with them like that. But I say this to those people, if Africans can treat white people and Arab people after the transatlantic slave trade and the Arab slave trade, which was horrible, the Arab mm, slave trade, was they even worse or hurt. yeah, they castrated every man. Mm. So if they can treat those people like Kings and Queens, when they come here, as if they've forgotten all the history, then we should treat them in a similar regard, not to say we've forgotten the history, but to say that maybe just maybe they really have <laughs> forgotten, you know, benefit of the doubt, yeah. build the relationship and then we'll get closer over time. Yeah. So that's yeah. all I got to say. Thank you guys. I believe the two of you have said everything that needs to be said. Mark, tell people where they can find you. Mark meets Africa. On YouTube? Yes. Do you have any social media pages? No, not really. You don't do Instagram? No, not really. Okay, the website? Uh, ah, AfricanMerge.com. Okay. We'll put, it, <laughs> we'll put it right there on the screen. Guys, thank you so much for joining us on this episode. You can send us an email at teamkinganda at gmail.com if you have anything you'd like to share with us. And you can also follow us on all our social media pages at Kinganda Nation. Yeah, guys, we'll see you next time.